Hi again and welcome to Practical Linux Commands Part 1. Let's start with the rm command. rm is for delete. And you know that while using rm minus r it means recursive. And if you use f it's gonna force. But today I'm gonna show you something else like what if you want to delete all the files in certain folder except or excluding some kind of files so let's test that now we have here java files some files which they end with java some files they end with text and some they end with mp3 if we write rm minus rf and we put between brackets asterisk dot text but we put exclamation mark which means not so it's gonna be rm minus rf not any text files so let's try this one so what do we expect that all the files gonna be deleted except the text files let's try that yes that's what we wanted in some cases you can get an error saying bash error that the exclamation mark is not there or the event is not there to fix this just run that command which gonna do all the globals for you and then it's gonna run fine so let's get back again to that exclamation mark we've learned you can use that with other commands too so for example if we create another files again which they ends with java to the java and then we do again with the mp3 fuse ls you're gonna see all the files okay what about if we want to list all the files except the mp3 files so we're gonna do the same ls minus la examination mark and I put the mp3 and that's what we want we want to list all the files except the mp3 so you can combine that examination mark with se several commands too one more thing that you can use is you can put rm minus rf or whatever command you put the exclamation mark and you put dot text or dot java so that way what's gonna do it's gonna list all the files except the text and the java files oops we did something wrong can you expect what is that you can pause the video and think about it and then come back for the solution okay the error is that we shouldn't keep any spaces here so you can remove the spaces again and let's try it's working fine so while putting any of the or or and or anything like that you shouldn't keep any spaces between brackets okay the second command is gonna be find with some extensive parameters in some cases you're gonna get your manager or anyone or you're getting alert that your server is running out of space and you want to search what the main files or the, the biggest files that's taking all the space let us see how we can search for that you can go like folder by folder and you can search for the disk usage but I'll show you usually what we do to get a nice report and know the users who are doing that and send them an email and ask them to delete the files or they are if there are system files we need to manage it I'm gonna use here find and then you wanna place the path and in that case I'm gonna put the root so you're gonna put the slash 
to search all, all, all over the server. Then you want to pass another option or another parameter saying minus xdev. What does that mean? It means like you are excluding all the network storages and that's very useful in real life scenarios because most of the cases you will have some NFS servers, NFS storages I mean and you want to exclude that while working on that, on, on, on searching the files. Second, you want to put the type of the files that you are looking only for files and not for folders. One more thing that you can use, you can use the size parameter. You don't want to search for all the files. You just want to search for files, for example, that more than, let's say, 100 megabytes. Okay. So I've learned so far how to exclude the network storages and specifying the files and searching only for files which are over 100 megs. After that, you need to execute a command which is going to check for the size. And for this, you can always use minus exec. This one going to execute any command. So if you put after it ls, then it's going to execute the ls. In our case, we're going to use the du minus sh to get all the, the, the simple ones in human, you know, format. We wanted to keep doing it because we are getting a lot of files. We put semicolon. If we return that right now, we're going to get a huge list and it's not going to be sorted. Yes, that's right. So now we need to sort the files. By running sort, you're going to get now the list sorted. But by experience, I add the minus R for reverse to get it the way that I want. And guys, again, whatever parameters you learn, try to be always, you know, thinking about the bigger picture and use the parameters and the options with other commands too. Just try. It's will never going to harm you. Last thing that I use, I'm going to go like searching for head, which means like the first files from the output comes in the head, or you can use instead of head, tail, which is going to do the opposite, which the end of the files. So in that, in our case, I'm going to use head and then minus N for the number of the files that we want to see. And I'm going to use 10. Let's try this and see how does it look. I'm going to pause the video and get back to you when it's done. Okay, I'm back again and I didn't find any results, which means that there are no files bigger than 100 megs. Let's try again the same command, but this time we're going to reduce the 100 megs to 10 megs. Yes, now we got some results. So we can see that the biggest file in the system it's under the user lab local and archive. So that is a very useful command that you will be using it all the time whenever you get an alert or you're getting a message from your hosting provider or anyone. Now what if you have one process that you want to kill or stop? Maybe it's taking a lot of the memory maybe if you have a ddos attack and you want to kill the apache process or anything like that so in that example i'm going to show you that we want to kill the apache process let's search first for the running processes in the background i'm using processes and then i'm checking all and by piping out I'm just searching for a specific thing. If we run PS AUX only, I see here all the running processes. If I pipe out and then I do like grip, 
minus I, I and I say HTTPD, I see that a lot of processes running in the background by Apache. So I cannot kill one by one. It's going to take time. And if there is something which is forcing the HTTPD to run again, it's going to keep, you know, building up. So what should I do? The best thing to do is using pika with hyphen f and then you put any word, any text and pkl gonna search for all the processes which has that text or wording and it's gonna kill them all. Let's try that. Okay. So now the HTTPD is killed by using the pkill. Okay, next command is gonna be yum and I'm gonna show you one parameter that it's helped me a lot in the past. Sometimes you install a package or someone else installs a package and it messes up in the, in the system and you wanna roll back. So let's see how we can use yum history by using yum history you can check everything that's already there right so this is the invalid history you got it I did something wrong okay oh I'm sorry guys so you put yum history and then list and then all I forgot putting the list now you are getting a list of the history and since this is a new instance or a new server I've installed like only as you see maybe six packages so you can see the name of the user here and the date and what he did install update or remove erase everything so what if we want to get some info about the history we can go like history and then you get info I'm sorry again I'm missing up yum history then info and put the number the ID number of the one that you want to check the info of okay so here you can see the username and he installed the HTTPD what if we want to roll back or revert this this one this number this activity you can go with yum history and then you put undo six it's gonna roll back and clean all the system all the packages and the dependencies so if you have an error or if you have a problem this really gonna save you now checked and it shows what kind of packages and dependencies and see even the resolution and everything that needs to be re resolved or deleted that's it the next command is a propose that command is very helpful guys it's not searching in the manual actually but it's searching inside the manual which means what if you don't know even the command you want to search for a file and you don't know how to search for a file you want to unzip a file but you don't know how to unzip a file simply you can search all the installed manuals so for example you can go a propose file and you did not find anything which has that file but does that make any sense like searching for a file does not return any results okay I'll tell you why because a purpose is reading from a local database and you need always to be sure that you are updating that database to update that database you need to run something called make what is always remember to run this especially if there is a new installed packages because you need to update the manual now I'm gonna pause and get back to you after it finished 
Ok, now it's done. Let's try to run the same command again. Purpose files. Wow, now it's returning a lot of stuff. See, it's very useful. So it's reading here, for example, compress or expand files. Zcat. So what if we combine a purpose file and then we want only stuff that has to do with zip files? Okay. Now we are getting all the commands that is using zip words with a file. So guys, it's very simple, but it's very useful. Whenever you want to do something, always remember to use that command. Okay, now talking about updating database or local database or DB, that reminds me of one command that I'm using all the time. It's called locate. If you are not aware about that command, it's very useful. Most of the time people whenever they want to search for a file they use find. But the problem with find that it takes a lot of time. But with, with locate it's searching in a local DB. So it finds the file immediately. It's very fast. It's very accurate. So let's try to use locate or anything. And you're going to find it like it's not working. Why? Because this is not something like it's installed in the system by default. And that's going to take us to another command. What if I don't know the name of the package that holds locate? I can use yum provides and search for locate for it. Let me pause it again. Okay. Now it returned a lot of results and if you go through them you're gonna find like all of them they have that locate that the one that I want and showing an utility for finding files. Okay, so let me install this one mlocate yum install mlocate Okay, because I did install it earlier guys so now you need to update the db for the mlocate using update db now it's done let's try locate if you say locate and we are searching for all the files which has the httpd see the results came in a second in less than a second but if you use find it's gonna take ages so Use always locate, but always remember to use the update DB to update your database. There is only one problem that always faced me while using the locate. With locate, there is no parameter that can show you information about the files. It's not like find. So I'm piping out all the results and then I'm using the ls minus la command so it's showing me the files with the location permission users and everything that you need the next step it's about the cron job sometimes I log into a system and I want to know what are the all the crons that are running but by checking only the cron tab you get only what's running for that user so for our example it's only the root user so how can we check all the users at once simply you can just list all what's running in the cron by listing that folder and in that way you can know that there are crons running for ec2 user and cron running for root user now you can simply read the jobs by running cron tab again, editing the jobs and checking by user. And let's say check for example the root. So this is the cron for the root and do it again for EC2 user because you know that there are ones here. And here we go. So that's going to make it easier for you. Thank you all guys. And that's all for that part. Until the next part, see you. Bye.